I'm honored that I was asked to be one of the keynote speakers at the 206 Global Organization Development Summit. The work you are doing is very important, and what I want to talk about today are some of the ways that organization development consultants in the United States limit themselves and do not achieve the potential that the field could offer. Let me start by saying what you already know. First, we all know that change is not only constant, but is increasing at a rapid pace. Not only that, but organizations, in order to be effective, have to get ahead of the change curve to see it coming and not just be reactive once it hits them. Second, as organizations move more and more into the knowledge economy, there's expertise within the organization that needs to be tapped. Third, mergers and acquisitions Studies by McKinsey show that over 75% of the mergers and acquisitions do not achieve the financial goals that were projected for them. And the major cause of this failure are problems with culture integration. The fourth area has to do with strategy. The problem is less with the strategy itself and with how it's implemented. Now all four of these areas are areas that organization development has expertise in. We know about how to handle change and how to produce change. We know how to integrate culture. We know how to tap in and utilize the expertise within the organization. And we know how to implement strategy and other change efforts. All of this means that OD specialists ought to be very central in an organization's life. CEOs and presidents ought to consult with us. We should be at the executive table. We should be involved in strategy formulation and in planning for mergers and acquisitions. Unfortunately, that is not the case in the United States. Very few presidents and CEOs utilize OD consultants. OD consultants are not at the executive table, for the most part. OD consultants rarely are in the strategy formulation or in the planning for mergers and acquisitions. Instead, OD consultants, if they are used at all, are down in the bowels of the organization, in the human resource department, doing team building, coaching, third party intervention, and maybe cleaning up some of the problems of inadequately planned strategy or mergers and acquisitions. What is perplexing about this is that the major consulting firms like McKinsey, Booz Allen, Monitor, and the others are extensively used in organizations, are listened to by the CEO and presidents, and are at the executive table when decisions are being made. The question then is why are they listened to and why so rarely are OD consultants listened to? Dr. Warner Burke at Columbia University and I were intrigued with this problem and we approached about a dozen leaders in the field to comment on it. We asked some of the original founders like Chris Argyris, Ed Shine, Jerry Porras, and some of the contemporary leading OD consultants like Tony Petrello, Bob Marshak, Barbara Bunker, to speak to this issue. While they all had slightly different diagnoses of the problem, they all agreed that there was a problem. What I'd like to do is not to review all the points they made, but to pick out four key issues that I believe are the cause for OD not being used in the United States as widely as it should be. The first is confusion about whether we are applied behavioral scientists or whether we are driven by humanistic values. Those are two very different orientations. As applied behavioral scientists, we look at what the research tells us and we ask the question, under what conditions do different approaches work? If we are driven by humanistic values, there tends to be only one sort of answer. One ought to collaborate. One ought to involve people. One ought to be open. One ought to be transparent. The second problem deals with a congruence or lack of congruence in goals between the OD consultant and senior executives. Let me illustrate this with a story. I was talking with a colleague recently 
who had successfully completed a merger process. In talking about it, he said there were three important outcomes. One outcome was that sales after the merger were 20% higher than expected. Second, morale didn't dip at all during the merger integration process, but stayed high. And third, there were no layoffs of any people from either of the firms. Now, when I tell this story to OD consultants and I ask them, rank order, which of these three are more and less important? Inevitably, they say no layoffs is the most important, morale is the second, and oh yes, the increased sales is, is important, but it's third. But when I ask executives, they reverse the order. For them, sales, increased sales is the most important, morale is second, and maybe no layoffs. In fact, they're a little worried about the last because one of the reasons for mergers is to cut down redundancy. And their concern is that the OD consultant, being so concerned with preventing layoffs, has not allowed certain economies of scale to occur. So what we have is a basic incompatibility of goals. Do OD consultants really hold the same goals of greater performance, profitability, greater market share, uh, return on investments that the chief executives hold? The third area has to do with the business functions. I'm not suggesting that OD consultants need to be experts in strategy, IT, M&A, re-engineering, the like. But they need to be knowledgeable about them and they need to value them. Too often, OD consultants are ignorant or have only passing knowledge of these fields. In fact, are sometimes even rejecting of them. Most OD consultants refuse to be involved in re-engineering for fear it would lead to layoffs and therefore passed an opportunity to really be of value to the organization. Note that the major consulting firms do not fall into these traps. They're very pragmatic. They ask what works, and they will use collaborative change efforts if that's most appropriate, or directive change effort efforts if that's called for. They also hold to the same values held by the chief executives, by the leadership of organizations. They want to help the organizations be more effective, profitable, increase market share and the like. They also aren't soft on power. They realize power is a necessary component of effective organizations. And they also honor that there are informal systems that have to be paid attention to. They also are knowledgeable about the business functions. They know about strategy and they know how to integrate the change efforts with strategy, with mergers and acquisitions, with IT change and the like. It is for this reason that they are listened to and OD consultants are not. I hope that OD consultants in India do not fall into these traps. But let me suggest three things for you to watch for as this conference goes on. First of all, what is the language that is used in sessions and out of sessions? To what extent is it predominantly humanistic language like participation, involvement, collaboration, openness. Now those are important. I hold on to those. But are those seen as ends in and of themselves or are they linked with the business functions so that we have collaboration for greater performance, greater productivity, less, less cycle time, and the like? The second thing is pay attention to the content of the sessions. To what extent do the sessions show the integration of OD change efforts with the functional areas of strategy M&A? Also, do they honor that organizations are different and show how change has to occur differently, say in the transportation from the public sector, from high tech and the like? The third area I'd like you to watch for is how self-reflective are people at this conference? Unfortunately, in the United States, when OD people get together at meetings, they tend to be more self-congratulatory than self-reflective. We ask our clients to reflect on how they're doing and are they meeting their goals? And are we doing the same? 
Are we asking ourselves the tough questions? Unfortunately, there are very few OD consultants in the United States who do that. So I wish you well at this conference, and I hope you achieve the goals of being more effective in helping Indian industries. Thank you.